So we're continuing on with our splayed dovetail stool. Last time we cut our pins and got the waist out in between. Now we're ready to actually fit them. We want to make sure that they're not so tight that the wood cracks or so loose that we have a large gap. So you're going to want to cut, get a couple things together. You're going to want that sharp paring chisel. Set your mortising chisel aside. Uh, you can also set this aside. We don't need this type of mallet. We need a dead blow mallet. Uh, you also need a uh, sacrificial piece, something to just spread on top, place on top of your dovetails as you're tapping it down so it spreads the pressure out evenly. And uh, this isn't absolutely necessary, but every now and then it comes in handy to have a file when you just have that tiny little bit of uh, waste to remove to get the fit you want. So I have my piece in uh, the vise. Actually, I'll kind of put it more centered in my vise. And these are the pins I uh, just cut. I went through and cleaned the shoulders up. And now I'm going to take my tailboard and I've labeled the joints A and B. This is joint B. And so what the amount of work we have to do here is going to be based on how confident, how close we were to our knifed transfer marks. Uh, you don't, again, I, I keep saying this is like the price of right. You want to get close without going over. You want to get as close to that line as possible without cutting too much off. Some people are hesitant, some are very confident. Um, but what I want to, our starting point is we want to get this piece to, to do what I call hook. We want it to just start to grab. Uh, you may need to move some ways to get to that point. Um, so I'm going to set this on here and I'm going to give it a tap. And I can feel on this side, over this pin, it's starting to see it, it's starting to hook. But over here, listen to the difference of the sound between this. Sounds very hard and tinny, whereas over here, sounds like a deeper kind of thud. That thud means it's starting to go down. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this an extra tap. I'm going to try to identify which pins are tight and which pins are loose, because I don't necessarily need to adjust them all. You can tell that because here it's going down, here it's not. All right, let's take a look. So you can see here, see how this piece is starting to flake off? That means it's not even coming close. It's not even registering on the marking gauge scribe. Uh, and I have a little bit of a dent in the corner here. I'm going to start adjusting um, the shoulder on this one. I'll need to, I might actually need to get some waste off of my shoulder on my tailboard. And I'll loosen this pin up a little bit, and then we'll try it again. So I determined I need to take a little bit off my shoulder. That's not uncommon. If you remember how we removed the waist on this piece, we, we set it sideways in the vise and came down uh, with our dovetail saw. It's possible that I was a little bit you know, off my angle. Um, so to do that, I put it tightly in the vise. And yeah, I can see there's a little bit of extra here. I'm going to just gently pare down. I'm not taking a lot off. See how small an amount that is? Uh, I'm just trying to get it to that marking gauge scribe. It's not uncommon to make these adjustments. and In fact, it's pretty typical. Uh, so don't feel like you're doing something wrong. It's a learning curve. Uh, we just have to go through each step and kind of learn each time. That's one of the things I like about dovetailing is uh, that each time, no matter how much practice you get, there is always some sort of tuning up and getting back to square. All right, and it was this pin, if I recall. Yes, this, this side of this pin is a little tight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chisel. I'm going to press the back of it and try to hold, I'm trying to hold it at 90 degrees um, and find the, the location where I'm just going to take a sliver and stay parallel with that saw curve. Um, and I'm going to take a little at a time. Especially with this curly maple on, that I'm using here, if you get greedy, if you try to take too much at once, the, the wood just wants to chip out. So when I get to the bottom, see all this curling I have here? To get rid of that, I just take it and twist the blade, and that gets rid of that. Uh, so we'll try seating that again, see if we can get it to hook. Yeah, I can feel that's much better. Sometimes it's just one pin that's holding you up. So I'm going to give it a tap and see if I can seat it. Then I'll put uh, my board on it to get more even pressure. All 
right, so it's starting to go on. I want to get, get it to crush enough that I get some identifying marks to tell me which pin is in my way. Well, actually, it feels like I could get a little further. All right. So now this piece is what I call hooked. It's hooked, it's hooked on there, but if I tried to just drive it straight down, I could cause a crack. Uh, but because it's on there and it's on there tight enough that it sits on there without me touching it, I can now uh, tap it off and look on the back for any more telltale marks of uh, which pin is tight and which one isn't. So let's take a look. So if you recall, we cleaned up our shoulder on our outer half pin over and that really let it seat on there. And now that it's seated a little bit uh, more deeply, I can look on the other side and notice that the same thing is happening on this shoulder, so I need to clean up this side as well. Uh, looking at my other pin sockets, that's what we call the mortises that receive the pins, I can see that there's a little bit of crushing on this one. Um, the others really aren't indicating anything yet. Uh, as we get deeper, we'll find out. So let's clean this up. So it's the same process as last time, both hands behind the chisel and try not to go past your marking gauge strap. All right, let's see how this goes. Now this is good. I can feel just without a mallet yet, I can feel just by putting a little bit of pressure, it's almost ready to just stay on there on its own. Okay, so now it's hooked. I'm going to see how far I can drive it. As I'm tapping down, I'm going to use my sacrificial block so that it distributes the pressure evenly across my row of dovetails. Sometimes you'll have one tight pin that uh, will prevent, uh, prevent the board from going down, but maybe the one adjacent to it uh, is very loose and wants to seat very quickly. What happens is it does what I call telegraphing. It's one side goes down faster than the other and it could cause a crack that wouldn't normally occur. Uh, so that's why we use this board to distribute the pressure evenly. Uh, I'm going to tap this down. I'm going to do two taps, and each time I do two taps, I'm going to remove it and look for anything. I'm going to look for the start of a crack. If I see a crack, then it's time to back off and adjust that pin. I usually make a pencil mark on the crack before I back it off because uh, when you take it off, sometimes it closes and you can't tell which one had it. Um, I'll also look for sort of curling of the wood inside the pin socket. That's another indicator that my pin is too tight and I need to remove some waste. All right, I'm not seeing any cracks. Uh, another thing is that as this dives down, we want to try to keep it at that seven degree splay. If you're somehow off your angle and you're tapping it, it can feel tighter than it normally is. Uh, so let's, and I, I check that by looking at the shoulder on the side of the board. I want to see that this shoulder and the back of the board are parallel. I'm a little bit off, so I'll tap that up to try to keep it at my angle. I'm not seeing any cracking or any curling, but this does feel very tight. I'm thinking in another tap or two, I will see some indications of where I need to remove my waist. Okay, I'm seeing some indications on this end that this pin, pin is a little tight, and I'll, I'll tap it off so you can see it in the close-up. All right, so let, let's take a look. And again, we're looking at the underside of our tailboard. Uh, you can see that there's some crushing happening in here, almost to the point where it wants to uh, sort of chip away the wood. So that means that this side of the pin needs to be uh, trimmed down. I'm also seeing a rounding over here. And not much else. So I'll address these two issues and then see how it goes. So to help me identify my pins, where I see where I did my, where I made my X's, I'm going to make that X on the end grain of the board. And then I'm going to make that X on the side of the pin. I don't want to take it off the wrong pin because then I'll make that one loose. Uh, it's nice when they all seat evenly. Sometimes, especially on the curly maple, uh, you'll be going in the wrong direction of the grain. 
you can always uh, place your chisel this way and then push up. You're just going to want to come at it from opposing sides to ensure that you take an even amount off. It's a little trickier, but it does the job. All right, so let's see how this one seats. That feels much better. You can see just without grabbing the mallet, it hooks on nice. Now uh, I'll tap it down and see if it makes a difference. That's seating much more nicely. Sometimes when I'm getting close, I take it out of the vise so that I have pressure on the bottom the whole way. Almost there. When I get close, remember the, our pins stick past our tailboard. I'll take my block and move it just behind the marking gauge scribe to get that last little bit. So there we have it, a nicely fit row of dovetails. You can see that our best indicator for which pins need to be adjusted is the inside of the tailboard. So we have this row of dovetails cut. I hope you continue to the next video in the series. Subscribe for more woodworking videos.